Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, another episode uh, uh, talking about the benign or recurrent abnormal movement in infancy. Uh, and we talk. We will talk today about um, recurrent uh, ab ab uh, ab gaze deviation of infancy, uh, which means you know it is the uh, b patient will uh, uh, tend to flex his neck and raise his eyes up so it is up gaze and recurrent paroxysmal it comes and goes uh, 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 events of infancy uh, this abnormal movement can uh, appear uh, before 12 months of age and uh, most of the time it happens uh, uh, and kids who are uh, developmentally uh, normal. Uh, it was described uh, first in 1988 by uh, Oliver and Olsen. And in the kids who had this uh, abnormal movement, according to their uh, uh, review, uh, the MRI when was it done, they found like 50% of the MRI of the brain was normal. And 50% they had uh, abnormalities that is not related to the uh, 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 or was not the was not causing this abnormal movement. It was ma ma mainly associated with this abnormal movement, like uh, uh, periventricular leukomalacia, which means you know the uh, area of the brain that is affected in the premature kids, uh, especially in the midline, and this area mainly affects the lower extremity. Uh, most of the kids who had this abnormal movement, when they have it, it's quick. It might happen uh, multiple times a day. It does not come in a cluster. It is not associated with any altered mental status, not associated with drooling. Uh, the kid does not go to sleep after that, and his eye movement, horizontal or vertical, uh, 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 are usually uh, normal. Uh, most of the kids, uh, when they grow up, they will outgrow uh, this uh, this order. They found some kids, you know, they might have a little bit of unsteadiness or what they call what we call ataxia. Ataxia means I am unsteady. So when I walk, I tend to spread my legs so I can give myself more uh, 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 secure. Uh, uh, or more balance or more security when I when I walk, and uh, sometimes they found a little bit of developmental delay in, the, uh, uh, in these kids that was uh, you know uh, corrected with occupational therapy, physical therapy, and uh, you know some uh, speech therapy as uh, needed. But by far, it was uh, th was thought to be benign uh, disorder that will disappear as the kid uh, or the infant uh, grows up. So it is. Recurrent paroxysmal upgaze deviation of infancy. The kid will flex his neck, put, you know, up, move his eyes up, and it come quickly uh, and it uh, disappear. It's very important, as we said, to recognize this uh, abnormal movement. Uh, you might not sometimes need to do an EEG if it is not clear, and the EEG, as we always say, should be read. Uh, by uh, a, a fully trained, a well-trained pediatric neurologist who knows how to read the EEG uh, because uh, there is uh, another syndrome called the Giovanni syndrome uh, which is uh, mainly uh, uh, happens in older kids and it's associated with abnormality of the EEG in the frontal area here. We call it bifrontal spikes and the kids, with the kids tend to do this abnormal movement. Uh, uh, but it usually happens in the older uh, patient. If the EEG is normal in this kid and uh, is, read, is read right, you know, uh, then I would just wait and see and keep a close eye on his development uh, in case he will need some speech, occupation, or physical therapy as needed. It's a benign disorder. It's really important to recognize it. And the most important thing about this disorder is to recognize it as it is very rare and it is uh, uh, once you recognize it you might avoid a lot of unnecessary investigation and unnecessary uh, visit and stress to the family uh, thank you guys have a good day and wait for us for the next uh, episode we will be talking about um, breath holding spells thank you